Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku, and today we are in beautiful Glacier National Park in Montana. We drove through Canada, we went through Alberta this time, we went through Jasper National Park and Banff. Unfortunately, it was really smoky up there uh, due to some fires around in the area. So we didn't get to enjoy it as much. We didn't get to fish this lake that I wanted to because it was closed and they were scooping water from that lake to dump onto the fire. But we did have a really crazy wildlife encounter with an elk. Check it out. Look at this big ass buck. Oh shoot. Oh my God. He does not like that car. Uh-oh. Why would you knock on your car? This lady better get back in. Look at that, bigger than the SUV, dude. <laughs> that thing's huge. Oh my god. That is too big, I don't like oh it. Oh my god. Oh, what is he doing? Oh my god. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh. no, 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 no. Oh, no, don't no, no, no. Don't look him in the eye. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so scared right now. What the heck is going on? You were safe and then you weren't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary. He's coming back. That was scary. Oh my god. <laughs> Chill, dude. Uh. Chill. That was so scary. Uh, I think <laughs> that was so scary. <laughs> That's why I said don't look him in the eye because he's doing the eye thing. <laughs> he was totally doing the eye thing. In my mind, as I was yelling, no, 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 the elks antlers were like coming through the uh, driver's side window that's what i i thought was happening that's why i was panicking i was like oh my god he's gonna stab me with his huge antlers and i was trying to roll the window up but if you look from jocelyn's point of view this is what it looks like that is too big i don't like it oh my god oh what is he doing oh my god oh hell no oh, oh. No, 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 no. oh no 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 don't look him in the eye oh my god so I guess the video evidence suggests that I was never really in that much danger, but but really in my mind, I thought it was right there, right next to my window. That was pretty crazy. I'm planning on doing some fishing. Got my fly gear um, on my back here. Uh, yesterday we were actually got here and we started, we did a little hike and we did some fishing, but we didn't catch anything that day. But we did take a nice cold plunge. It's now 3 p.m. So we might be able to catch a little early evening bite. Maybe get ourselves a trout for dinner. We'll see. We can only keep the non-native trout, which would be like a rainbow trout or brook trout. And I think there's also cutthroats in here, which are the native species that we have to catch and release only. And possibly lake trout as well. Those are all catch and release. Oh, here we go. Oh, baby. That's pretty nice. First things first, a little dip in the lake. You gotta do it quick. Oh, 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 that's good. All right, now that I scared all the fish away, let's start fishing. Here we go, first cast. Nothing on the first cast, let's move down here a little. Here's a follow, here's a follow. Here's it, come on, take it. Oh, it really just followed it all the way to the bank. All right. Just gonna flick it out there lightly. And then slow. You don't seem to like it fast. Come on, come on. There was one that was just following it. And it just came up to it two times, boom, and left, came back, left, and then the third time, just took a little nibble, and was out. It's hard to get these uh, fish to bite on, bite on the spinner. Got a little spinner on there, rooster tail, I think. But I can see that they're eating a lot of the surface stuff. Just all the little mosquitoes and flies on the surface. They're really getting after those. Too bad I didn't bring my fly rod up here with me. But tomorrow, I think that's what we'll try. We'll try it with the fly rod. 
and use some dry flies. Now we're gonna do this hike to what's supposed to be a beautiful lake with some fish in it. We got some wildlife. There's a deer. A little guy. Oh, another one. Well, we got our first view of the lake behind me there, all the way down. So now we're gonna hike downhill. It's like in the lake sort of in this bowl surrounded by big mountains. Really beautiful. It looks really nice and clear now, but it is actually a little bit smoky here as well. And if you look down, right down there, looks a bit hazy. That's actually some smoke. Looks like we have about a mile to go downhill see some switchbacks from here and then uh, we'll be there fishing very soon with an inflection on the lake mm -hmm. that's so sick <laughs> grizzlies here intimidate me more than their much larger cousin the coastal brown bear in Alaska why um, I feel like here they're used to really dumb tourists who do very dumb things like feeding them or leaving their food out mm -hmm. so i feel like they are more aggressive you know what they say dead bear is a dead bear a dead bear is a dead bear so don't For feed all those the bears videos of people running from bears don't do that they're just gonna chase you <laughs> so one thing we did learn after that elk encounter you know we looked up what do we do if we encounter an elk like that when we're on foot and they say you're supposed to run because they won't really chase you. They said, uh, yeah, just get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it even talked about the body language and the body language he was showing us was that of like alarm or concern, I guess. Um, he was in rut, that's why he had all those he had a bunch lady of, elks with him. Yeah, he had a bunch of girls with him. And dang, that elk was big. <laughs> it was taller than the SUV and I was, whew. And our van is tall, you know, we sit high and his antlers were just, I thought they were right in my face. Ooh, look at this ray of sunshine. So if we get a, a brook trout or a rainbow, those are we keep. Oh, the smell in this evergreen forest is just delightful. It's nice, huh? Yeah. Fresh air for all, from all these trees. Oh, it's right there. Here we go. There it is. Oh, so nice. Sick. Water's so clear. Yeah, it's crazy. crystal clear. We're not gonna fish that first spot because that's where obviously the most fishing pressure would be. So we're gonna try to walk along the bank here. Or actually, there's another little trail going a little further. Somebody's flying a drone. He nearly crashed it into, into us, <laughs> really close to Jocelyn. Didn't even apologize, apologize or anything and just kept. He just laughed, him and his friends laughed. And uh, just so you know, you're, it's illegal to fly a drone in national parks, in any national park. So you won't see any drone footage in, in this video. But yeah, definitely don't be that guy. Yeah. This one is actually separated from the other one. It's like a foot deep. Aye, aye, aye. Ah. Got through. Might have gone. <laughs> hey bear. Hey bear. We're in bear country now. Right, I'm thinking right out the bend up here. Oh, look at that. There's a little point. If there's a drop off there, that would be a perfect spot. Nice. It looks good to me. Let's try right here. All right, we've got the fly rod ready. First, starting with a tiny dry fly. Little brown, little brown guy. Let's give that a shot first. We'll try this for a few minutes switch out flies and then if nothing works we'll keep moving let's go for it
Got a fish on. We got a fish on. Hey, that didn't take too long. Oh, nice. It's decent. This is a cutthroat. Got him. Oh, with my hands to handle him. Yeah, this is a cutthroat trout. Look at that. Ate that dry fly right on the corner of the mouth. Should pop out pretty easily. Yeah, that's a decent sized fish. But yeah, that's a beautiful fish. And they call them a cutthroat because if you look under their throat, it looks like they have a, some blood on it. So it's real nice, like it's really bright red. So that's why they call them a cutthroat trout. Beautiful. All right, we'll let this guy go. There he goes. Nice and healthy. Woo! Got our first cutthroat trout here in Montana in Glacier National Park. Oh, man, this place is beautiful. Woo! High five. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let's see if we can get another. So it's actually really shallow in front of me for about 20, 25 feet. And there's, I'm targeting this drop off. I can tell that right after that, it drops off a little bit because the water color changes. It goes from a light kind of green water color and it goes to a little darker blue. So right, that's where I was targeting and that's exactly where that trout hit. Let's see if there's another one at that same spot. Got another one. Nice. This one I saw coming up for it. That was nice. Not sure, this might be different. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. Another cutthroat. Pretty decent one too. Maybe even bigger. Another mountain beauty. Look at that. Wow. Number two, baby. That was a good one too. And then uh, right around the same spot as well. Ooh. Just awesome being in a place like this, catching fish. Man, even if I can't keep them. <laughs> no worries, we'll still cook something delicious later. That's for sure. Oh, got another one. Oh, lost it. I lost it. That one came off. So here's my limited collection of flies. I don't have too many, but uh, I've been using the dry flies and they've been working. So let's see what I should do next. Maybe one of these guys, a little bit slightly bigger one or maybe a dragonfly or this red ant looking one. Hmm, or maybe this one. I'll, I'll do one with the, I'll do this big one. See if they'll hit something big. These are good sized trout. I can see this bigger dry fly much easier. But let's see if they'll actually hit it too. Another fish on. <laughs> I don't think this is a cutthroat. It looks different. It looks silvery more. More like. Let's see what it is. Actually, I think this is another cutthroat. Just a little bit more chrome. I think they're getting bigger. Yeah, I took that bigger dry fly. There we go, came off easily. Beautiful. All right, we'll let this guy go. That's number three. <laughs> fly fishing, baby. Fly fishing. Fly fishing so easy. <laughs> Let's see if Jocelyn can get one on the fly rod. I love how crystal clear the water is. You can really see the fish just come up and take it. You don't want to go like back and forth like constantly. You want to go forward, pause, go back, pause, and you kind of have to, you, you want to wait for, for the uh, 
fly to catch have fun it. Fun whipping it. Have <laughs> fun whipping it. Real, real, real. If yeah. it wants to fight, you gotta let it go. You gotta let the reel go, and it'll oh. take drag. Yeah, but now it's coming in, so it's coming in. It's coming in. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big one. That's a, the biggest one. Oh, nice one. That one's huge. <laughs> of course you get the bigger one. <laughs> Dang, that one's huge. Yeah, also cutthroat. Go. go ahead and wet your hand. Nice. Sorry, fish. Just hold your tail. Oh. There it is. Nice one. Good job. Here, breathe your breathe your water. some salmon dip here that we made with the smoked salmon. Thank you. Yum. Good trail snack. Great trail snack. Mm -hmm. Good driving snack too. There's some Thai chilies in there and there's also wasabi in here. Put a lot of wasabi, it's really good and salmon dip. Well, that was a lot of fun, but we should start heading back before it gets really windy up there. So we'll see you back at the van. We got back to our van and we headed down to Yellowstone National Park, which is about a five hour drive from Glacier. And Yellowstone's famous for its geysers and all of its wildlife. Now we're in Grand Teton National Park, which is actually right next to Yellowstone. We have this beautiful, breathtaking view of the Grand Tetons right in front of us. And Jocelyn's gonna make us lunch right now. One of my favorites, she's making Jocelyn's famous enchiladas. <laughs> They're not famous. They're about to be. <laughs> Let's get cooking. So this is all the ingredients you need for enchilada sauce, Roma tomatoes, Serrano peppers, as many as you want for spice level, I like a thick slice of red onion, and usually like two to three garlic cloves. These are really small. All right, and we're just gonna put our tomatoes and serranos in here. And if you're at home, you could actually roast them in the oven and have kind of like a charred salsa flavor if you're into that. Or if you like green salsa, you can replace these with tomatillos. The other year, Jocelyn grew a ton of tomatillos <laughs> and we had a lot of salsa verde enchiladas. Those good. Those, that's the stuff right there, but yeah, we couldn't find any in uh, Montana or Wyoming, but. Yeah, well, even finding tortillas. They're like some homemade ones. They're, they mm -hmm. look pretty good. I hope so. So, we'll see how those are. We could have made our own too if we wanted to, but yeah, these would be good. They look good. So, while the tomatoes are cooking, you can just lightly fry your corn tortillas. And I know you're gonna be tempted to use an oven, but don't, you can tell a huge difference. Oven cooked enchiladas tend to taste kind of dry in my opinion, and I don't think they're good compared to these stove cooked ones. It takes longer, but cooking is a labor of love. <laughs> and you wanna just lightly fry it, not completely fry it, or else it'll end up crispy like a tostada. And we're making enchiladas. So you can see the color difference here. Lightly fried, not fried. This is kind of the tricky part of making enchiladas in the van. Our blender, super small. But you basically want your tomatoes so that the skin is kind of falling off. There you go. I'm just gonna have to blend one tomato at a time, I think. So in the blender is gonna be the garlic, the onion, the tomatoes, and the serranos. Once the skin is splitting like this is when you know it's done. Or if you're roasting it in the oven, it should get like black and blistered. And then just pour it into a pan and heat it up so it cooks. 
And make sure you wash your blender very well or your next smoothie is gonna be very spicy. I'm just gonna put a little salt in there. And I went ahead and chopped up some red onion and some lettuce. And how long do you cook the salsa for? Ooh, that's hard to it taste right. To it taste right? <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> I don't know, like 10 minutes maybe? I feel like the longer you cook it, the more flavor, but it also will start to kind of get dried out. Last time we grilled some chicken, but this time we got some rotisserie chicken left over, so that's what we're gonna use for the, for the filling. Just gonna shred up all this chicken. And I always get asked why I cook my salsa. You do this for enchiladas and chilaquiles, but not for like the salsa that you're gonna dip your chips in or put on tacos. That's a fresh salsa. Mm -hmm. I think it's tasting good. And you're gonna dip your tortilla. And this is also why you wanna fry them lightly so they don't fall apart when you dip them in the salsa. As you can already tell, they're losing their like stiffness. All right, we're gonna fill it with chicken. And I like to put a little fresh onion inside and then roll it up. Fill it up. And the raw onion is optional if you're not into that. But it tastes really good. Mm -hmm. And then I like to put a lot of salsa on top. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put some sour cream on top. Or if you have a Mexican store near you, get some crema. It's a little runnier and goes on easier. And tastes a little different too. Yeah, you definitely have to use queso cotija, not melty cheese. And it's surprisingly pretty easy to find at most grocery stores. I even found it in Alaska. More. Yes, I like extra. When I first met Taku, he said he did not like queso cotija. Yeah, that's true. That's and now weird. I can't get enough of it. Seriously can't get enough of it. It had like a little funk at first, you know, when we first <laughs> did it. Now it's just so addicting. And I like to put a little bit of lettuce on top of my enchiladas, just because I feel like it gives it a little crunch and a little refreshing taste. An onion. Oh yeah, Taco likes a lot of extra onion. Oh wow, look at this guys. <laughs> Doesn't this look absolutely delicious? Oh, it's my favorite. All right, let's eat. All right, can't wait. Okay, well, I'm gonna have a sip of beer first. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Oh, wait. <sighs> Ooh. Let's mm. dig in. Oh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm about to salve. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's so good. That's delicious. And this is what I always say. If I wasn't going to wake up tomorrow, this would be my last meal. Mm. That's how good it is. It's so simple and easy to make. It's got to be with the queso cotija for sure. Mm -hmm. It just adds so much flavor and, and it, like a uniqueness to that cheese. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, it's in the spice level, on point. I think we could put another it's serrano. Good. A serrano, yeah, you could go up. Sometimes you make it like super spicy, and that's good too. But this is spot on. And this is also very similar to how you make your chilaquiles. But you put epazote in the salsa. Mm -hmm. It's like a little herb. Mm -hmm. You always do it with chicken, but I bet it would be good with other stuff too. Mm -hmm. Have you tried putting other stuff? No, beef kind of feels too heavy for me. Yeah. I've had beef enchiladas. Um, shrimp, maybe even crab would be good if you do like a creamy green salsa. Mm. All right guys, well, 
I hope you enjoy this episode. We got to see three national parks uh, just in a very short amount of time. And if you like the video, if you like Jocelyn's cooking, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you like to as well. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.